Um, could the person who just joined the call with the unintelligible string please identify themselves? Yeah, this is Rodoslav. Um, and this is whom? To... Yeah, I will try to to log in myself. Yeah. I uh, just just you could, there's a rename button. It's just with the problems oh. we've had with some Zoom bombing, it's good to know that we're dealing with real people. Um, oh, okay. okay. Well, for those of you who are um, joining the meeting. I will put the link in the chat for folks to add themselves to the attendee list. And <clears throat> the just a quick reminder, these meetings are recorded. They will be posted to YouTube. And we typically start about five minutes um, into the meeting. So we usually take about five minutes for folks to gather themselves. Let me actually, speaking of renaming, let me rename myself properly. There we go. So welcome to the Network Service Mesh meeting. Please add yourself to the attendee list. We'll give it a couple more minutes and we'll get started. Fantastic. So <clears throat> I've put the link to the meeting minutes in the chat. If you could please go ahead and add yourself to the agenda. And not to the agenda, but to the, the attendees list. I mean, add yourself to the agenda too if you have something you'd like to discuss. That's totally kosher. Okay, we are five after the hour, so let's just go ahead and get started. So, welcome to the next Network Service Mesh meeting. Uh, this call occurs every Tuesday at 8 a.m. Pacific. We 
Um, Nikolai, are we still running the uh, Asia-friendly polls? Um, I'm I know you recently switched uh, to a new position. So is, is that something that's still running? Is he on the call? Because I, I, I think he's not. I might not be. That, that, yeah, that's probably, that's probably quite the problem. I will uh, reach out to him afterwards. So we tend to run a, uh, to, to run one every other week. Um, but we had Nikolai just uh, had a uh, job change. And so he's still uh, working with the network service special community. It's just, uh, I don't know if that time will, will work for, for Nikolai, but uh, it is possible that perhaps one of our other uh, uh, colleagues in the NSM community may pick it up. So uh, anyways, I will, I will work that out and I will report to the results back next week. Um, we yeah, also- actually, Sorry, Frederick, usually on this meeting, uh, Join it only uh, Xorit and the VMware folks. So I'm not fully sure if the Asia call is uh, so strongly required. Yeah, that makes sense. And so um, ultimately it's a decision for, for uh, the people attending for all of you if you wanna continue it or, or not. Um, and I, I know eventually once we have something on in, in, that's production ready and running and then people will, uh, uh, will definitely show up from, uh, from Asia friendly time. Uh, yeah, the question yeah. would be whether it's worth, uh, investing the time now versus investing, uh, starting at the time investment then. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for that information. So we also participate in the. CNCF Telecom User Group, which occurs every um, first and third uh, Monday of the month. Um, the first uh, first Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific and, and every third Monday at 3 a.m. Pacific. The next one will be two weeks from now at 3 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, and these times are going to switch over to UTC time, so we'll update these uh, soon once we get the calendar on that. The, uh, we also participate in the CNCF SIG network, which occurs every first and third Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific, um, which should be this week. Um, a, a few other things, KubeCon China has been canceled. Uh, KubeCon Europe is now a virtual experience. And uh, the, we are going to work out what's going on in terms of, uh, in terms of NSMCon. Um, and so we'll have information on that soon. We have ONES North America, which is happening on September 28th. And uh, the ONS Europe in Antwerp is to be determined. Um, we also have KubeCon, CloudNativeCon North America, which as of now has had no change in schedule. Just as a heads up, the CFP closes in June 12th, which is uh, just a little bit over a month from now. Um, in terms of uh, announcements, um, the, uh, the webinar we put on last, uh, last week in conjunction with the East 50 and uh, uh, Spire and uh, Anthem and HPE went really well. So definitely recommend uh, taking a look at it if you are interested in zero trust. Uh, social uh, media community team. So Ashley sent a message that she was not gonna be able to attend this particular week, but she's updated the stats. And so we have um, 753 followers, followers on Twitter, which is an increase in three, and we are following five more. And we have put out 22 tweets. Um, we posted call reminders, last week video recaps, the uh, link to the webinar, a CNCF testbed event call, uh, testbed call reminder. And all of these are linked in the agenda, by the way. So if any of these are interesting to you, then this is one place you can find them. The NSM, and NSM con, stay tuned for more info, uh, virtual experience information, ONES information in, for, uh, for Los Angeles, and we retweeted LF networking. Um, uh, there was a, uh, there's some uh, media that uh, LF networking put out, including a keynote. Uh, VMware open source um, 
uh, blog about as to what the biggest barriers are for developers joining and a 30% off on certificate and training. <laughs> I feel like an advertisement now. Um, LinkedIn stats, we added another person and posted the same content as uh, Twitter. And our plan is to continue on with NSMCon EU, promote registration, promote sponsorship, continue to share KubeCon schedule, and continuing to promote NSM sessions at KubeCon, uh, assuming there are no changes there. Um, and so on the agenda, uh, we have a new tool. It is called To Go, and Ed will tell you all about it. Ed, you have the floor. Sure. Um, <clears throat> let me share just a really quick bit then, because the it's easier to talk with a little bit of text in front of you. So th there's a, there's a stand, set of, of standing problems right now that we've been hitting in spades, trying to do development of Go um, in a you know in a doc where you're trying to build Docker images with developing Go, particularly when you've got multiple repos. And let me go ahead and, and share the screen. There we go. And this is a, the reason I'm bringing this up as a tool I'm hoping we'll adopt because I think it will probably make our lives easier. So basically, the, the basic problems are when you're using Go and Docker together. First, you know, basically, you get the redownload of Go dependencies on each Docker build, and you can sort of hack around that with putting this little ugly bit of stuff into your Docker file, but it's still a thing. Also, you don't get the binary uh, object cache, which slows down your Docker builds, which is annoying. But then this is the one. The, the third one here is the one that really has made life hell. Um, which is local go mod replace directives, things like saying, oh, I'd like to replace, um, you know, I'm, I'm working on a command, like command forwarder, uh, VPP agent, and I'd like to go hack a little bit in SDK. So normally in Go, you just put a replace directive that redirects to the local SDK copy you have, and life is grand, until you go to try and build your Docker container, and then you're completely screwed, because Docker copies your local command repo into its context, and it goes to do its build and it doesn't find your local copy of SDK and it basically doesn't work. And th this is ugly and awful and terrible. And so essentially what all to go do is, you know, provide a drop in go replacement where you can run to go build or any other uh, Docker, any other go command you're used to. And it will effectively create a local cache and a dot to go directory uh, within your current directory that will be picked up by Docker. And so just by using to go instead of go in your Docker file, um, then it works normally if you haven't used to go in your local host. But if you have used to go on your local host, then it goes ahead and, and does that. Uh, it goes ahead and uses that, that cache that got scooped up. Um, and then finally, just as a convenience matter, if you give it something that's not a go command, it will just execute it after warming the cache. So you can literally just say to go Docker build it will warm your local cache on your host. It'll then run Docker build, which pulls that up. And you get a nice warm cache in building your Docker containers. So it should let us build much, much simpler, much, much easier, uh, much, much cleaner Docker files without having to do all kinds of insanity. So I, I'd appreciate it if folks could kick the tires. That would be fantastic. Um, and but it, 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 mm -hmm. sorry, yeah, an important part about it is that it literally follows the same semantics as, as the Go build, as the Go uh, toolchain. So you type Go build, you type to Go build. It's this. It's literally the same. Uh, well, I mean, it, the same shape. So it's literally the same speed. tooling under the covers because under the covers, all it's really doing is um, constructing the cache and then handing off to Docker, but shifting Docker's go cache, go path, and PWD uh, environment variables into the cache location. So it, it, everything is really being done by, doc, by Go under the covers. It's just a very, very light shim. Uh, you know, it, it's a very, very tiny amount of, of, of stuff that it does. So, um, the hope is we can start using this in network service mesh uh, fairly soon. But again, tire kicking would definitely be welcome. Any questions from folks about this or comments or?
Cool. So one other um, interesting thing as well is um, this should also work on other platforms as well. So uh, it definitely works on OS X because that's what Ed develops on. And then we have Linux support uh, should be there uh, quite naturally because uh, that's what NSM is developed on and compiles against. And so that leaves uh, the only other area that, that needs to be tested out and, and to see if it works or not is going to be the uh, Windows environments, which for the NSM community is, uh, is secondary. Um, but uh, if anyone has an interest in, in that space, definitely feel free to give it a shot and see it work. Uh, they, Windows, just like Linux, also has the capability to create hard links, and that's the only requirement is that you're, you can create links in your file system. And so in that scenario, uh, it, should be, uh, it should be relatively straightforward to, to get it to work. Um, cool. So in terms of, uh, of agenda, uh, is there anything else that anyone would like to, to discuss? Okay, so I have one last uh, item. So I've been working on a set of examples, um, or I've been working on a on an example for the SDK, I mean, the new SDK, and helping develop out the last portions of the SDK to get a full working something that works end-to-end uh, -end in, uh, in that environment. So in the near future, I will have some, uh, some working information on how to develop uh, against the, uh, the new SDK, which will include information on how to develop new network service endpoints and information on how to contribute to NSM directly. Interestingly, the, uh, the overlap between network service endpoints and NSM itself are now extremely similar. The uh, network service uh, uh, manager and network service registry all end up looking like uh, network service endpoints in terms of their in terms of their APIs, and uh, the SDK has a very clean way to compose these uh, various services together. So uh, we will have more information on that. And if you know how to develop a network service endpoint of which the, there's a very basic pattern to do so, then that means you can literally create functionality for uh, internal NSM without, uh, without having to know about how everything works internally. You can focus on the logic of your, of your application uh, in a very tight way. And the system will compose nicely with uh, with the rest as long as as long as you follow uh, certain uh, as long as you follow certain patterns. And those patterns are uh, they are will be document uh, they'll be documented in more detail as as we continue forward. Well, well I don't have anything else. So if there is nothing else, then. Uh, we will conclude. So last call. Okay. Well, thank you everyone for attending and we will see you again at the same time next week. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye.